A few months ago, I made a video about building a sentry turret that used a Microsoft Connect to track a person, aim, and shoot at them. It was a pretty fun build, and to give a little bit of visual flair in the video, I put a laser pointer on the gun on the turret so that you could see where it was aiming. And that got me thinking, what if the gun could see where it was aiming uh, and just use that to aim at whatever target it's trying to hit? If you've seen the previous video, then you know that I had to offset the turret and the connect by a set distance and do some trigonometry to calculate how to aim based on that distance. And I thought, if the gun knows where it's pointing, then it doesn't need all that because it can just tell itself to move this way or this way in order to center on the target that it's trying to hit. So I thought about all that, and of course I came to the logical conclusion that I need to build another turret. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to use a whiteboard to talk about this next part or if I'm just going to go for it. So obviously the first problem is, how am I going to know where the gun is pointing? And of course the solution is to keep the laser pointer in there and then use color tracking to isolate where the laser pointer is in the camera frame and that'll tell me where the gun is pointed. Now to be totally honest, I don't know a whole lot about computer vision. I took a class on it a long time ago and I don't really remember anything. So color tracking is about the extent of my abilities. So for now, I'm also going to use color tracking to track the target that I'm trying to aim at. The purpose of this video is not really to teach computer vision anyway. So I think I can get away with that. I'm just gonna pretend that any intruder that comes in has some sort of big colored spot on them so that I can find them and aim at them and some other engineer who's way better at computer vision can handle actually tracking people to aim at them. This is gonna be my target, in fact. I have no idea where this came from. I just found it in a pile of junk on the other side of my room. And uh, it's basically just some plastic red rectangle and it seems to track really well uh, in the lighting in this room. So I'm gonna stick with that. As a bonus, it already has some tape on the back so I can just stick it wherever I need to stick it. All right, so now the tracking's out of the way, I need to dig into the real problem of this project, which is, if I know where the gun is pointing and I know where I want it to point, how do I adjust it so that it ends up pointing right at the target? And the answer to that is a feedback control system. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. You know, the naive solution might be something like, I'm pointed over here, I want to aim over here, so for every frame that I'm not pointed at the right spot, move the servo one degree this way until it eventually points at the correct thing. And that might work, but it's really not optimal because you know I'm doing one degree every frame when I could cover most of this distance in the very first frame alone and then just do a little bit of fine tuning at the end. And that's what the feedback control system is gonna do. Uh, basically the idea, you know what? I, we're just gonna draw a diagram. Yeah, I don't really feel like erasing the whiteboard and rewriting stuff every time I screw up what I'm trying to say. So we're gonna go with paint this time. Make sure I have the signature uh, green light turned on. So feedback control is something like this. You know your target position. You want to get the error from where it's supposed to be, which we're gonna call E of T, and you feed that into your feedback controller, and then that gives you a control signal which should correct for the error. We're gonna call that U of T. We feed that back into the motor, or whatever you're trying to adjust. In our case, it's a motor. And from there, you measure the new position of whatever you're trying to read. In our case, it's where we are aiming the uh, turret. So we're going to check the pixel value of where the laser pointer is pointed. But this could be um, you know, any other kind of sensor or encoder or something like that that you're reading to get a measurement. All right, and then that's going to give you your measured position. And this is where the feedback part of this comes in because we take this value and we feed it back into the input of the system here. And that's gonna be done just by subtraction. All right, so one more time real quick. We know where our target position is. We know based on where we're looking, uh, what the error is. We put that into some kind of controller algorithm. That's gonna give us our new signal for the motor, which in our case is a pair of servos. And then once those servos are set, we're gonna remeasure where our uh, aiming position is and then we're going to feed that back into the system to get a new error. And the idea is that each time through this loop, we're going to reduce the error until our measured position is on top of our target position, which in our case means that the laser pointer is on top of the 
a uh, little red target I showed a minute ago. All right, so the question stands, what is this guy right here? And in this case, I'm going to use a PID controller. And that stands for proportional integral derivative. So fair warning, here comes some math. So what we have to do is calculate our error first. And that is gonna simply be uh, the target position minus the measured position. And that's what we're gonna feed back into the PID controller. And the algorithm for that looks like this. All right, so that's some constant we're calling KP times the error plus a constant KI times the integral of the error with respect to time plus another constant called KD times the derivative of the error with respect to time. So you might have noticed here P, I, and D. That's the PID and PID. And these constants represent uh, controls that will be exposed to the end user so they can tune the system. And basically each one adjusts the amount of each of these three components, how much proportional control are you using, that's KP, how much integral control are you using, that's KI, and how much derivative control are you using, that's KD. And really proportional is gonna be your most critical component here because that's really what reduces the error down. Uh, and integral and derivative are more for uh, fine tuning that response. And of course, if you set any of these three constants to zero, then you just eliminate that term entirely. So in our case, we're gonna be looking at a video frame and somewhere on that frame is gonna be our target. Maybe I shouldn't use red because that seems like a laser pointer, right? And somewhere in that frame is going to be our target that we're trying to get to, call that T. And then somewhere else in the frame is going to be our laser pointer. And then I'm going to be measuring the X distance and the Y distance here. So basically I get an error for the X and I get an error for the Y. And then I'm going to run both of these errors through the PID controller. And then in the next frame, the laser pointer may end up here and then here. And eventually, ideally, it'll get right there. So something else to take a look at here is between the first two frames, you might have this long distance uh, in the correction. And then between the next two, it's kind of shorter and then even shorter. Uh, so basically, it's shrinking. And this is because uh, the amount that we're moving the motor is proportional to the error and the error should be shrinking each time which means we move it less and less each time uh, which means that we're less likely to do something like overshoot over here and then have to come back over to here which that's still a possibility and it's something that you try to mitigate using these other terms but ideally we want to just smoothly move this laser right up to the target and in fact let's look at responses a little bit closer here for a minute yeah, time to make some graphs. So if you're getting a little bit bored at this point in the video, feel free to skip ahead and just see how the thing works in the end. It's not gonna hurt my feelings. But if you wanna know what's going on behind the scenes, then take a look here. All right, so on the y-axis, we're going to have our signal. In the x-axis, we have time. And that's the same for all three of these graphs I'm gonna draw here. So this green line here is going to represent the target signal. So for now, we're gonna assume that the target is always just a constant value. It's one specific coordinate on the image frame at all times. And then in red, I'm gonna draw the signal for where the laser is pointing. And uh, basically, I'm gonna show what kind of response we have as the laser tries to close this gap over time. Basically, what is the distance between the target and the laser pointer uh, as time moves forward? Uh, and so depending on how we tune the system, we might end up with uh, one of three different types of responses. So the first one that could look like this. So laser's coming up, trying to get to the target, but then it overshoots, tries to correct, overshoots again, overshoots, overshoots, and so on, and we get this oscillation until eventually uh, it hopefully will flatten out here. Okay, so this is not ideal. Basically, we're wasting a lot of time here trying to get to our signal by uh, overcorrecting each time, and uh, we call this an underdamped system. And this could result from like having too high of a KP value or uh, something like that. And to take a quick look at how this might show up in our case, assuming this is like the video feed and we're tracking that our target is over here and then our laser pointer starts out over here, we might get something like this where we go too far up, come back too far, too far, too far, and then eventually we center on the target after some oscillation here. 
All right, so in our next graph, uh, you might have a response that looks something more like this. You're moving up to your thing, and you do get there without oscillating. Uh, but this is just sort of a slow trajectory to getting up here. I mean, it's kind of hard to demonstrate it in this graph, but um, yeah, that's that's basically the idea. You got rid of the oscillation, but it just took you a long time to get there. And uh, we would call this an overdamped system. And now the last version, you might guess, is kind of our ideal scenario. So basically, it's just going to rise quickly up to your target and then level out and uh, not oscillate at all. Ignore these wobbles here. That's not oscillation. That's just attempting to draw in Microsoft Paint, okay? And if you manage to tune your system to get this response, we call that critically damped. If you want to do further reading, I'm pretty sure there's a way to mathematically determine if you've made it to your critically damped scenario. But I think we've gone deep enough down the rabbit hole here. And I will just mention that uh, something I will not be doing in this project is plotting the output of uh, the system. You know, if you really wanted to tune the system well, then you might use the serial connection on the Arduino to, uh, you know, send out target data and plot these graphs to see where your damping is ending up. And also just know that the target value doesn't have to be a constant like this. It could actually be moving, and uh, I am hoping that my system will work with a moving target as well as a stationary one. Feast your eyes. It's basically the same setup as the Connect version, but there's no Connect. Instead, there's just a webcam over here. Got the gun connected to the microcontroller. Battery. The relay is disconnected because I'm not doing any firing this time. And the laser pointer is just zip tied on here, and I'm going to use this zip tie to hold the button down. So let's take a look at how it works. All right, this is the app. So we've got the main video feed in this display here, and it will also show uh, bounding boxes and coordinates around whatever we're tracking. And these two screens here will show whatever pixels we're actually tracking for uh, both the laser pointer here on top and the target on the bottom. Uh, so let me demonstrate by just turning on the laser pointer. And then we've got all these controls around here. So uh, the way I'm doing the color tracking, I'm using a program called MGU, uh, e -M -G -U, which is a C-sharp wrapper for uh, OpenCV, which is an open source computer vision library. And all the color tracking really entails is converting the uh, camera frame into the HSV color space, and then just applying filters to that space uh, so that we eliminate all pixels that we don't want and then we find the shapes that remain and I'm just taking the largest one as whatever object I'm gonna track. So if you look down here I've got this H min, H max, S min, S max, and V min, V max. Uh, I've got that same thing over here. Uh, this one's for the target on the right side and the laser on the left. And this is just the hue, saturation, and value that I'm using for the filter. Uh, minimum value and maximum value and anything in between we will track. So for instance, if I adjust the minimum value component, then uh, we start picking up uh, some stuff in the room that matches the rest of the filter. And basically all I did to configure this was to uh, point the laser at the wall and adjust all these sliders to filter out everything that I could except for that. And then um, I put the save button here and that'll just save the configuration. So next time I run the app, it'll pull it all up with the same stuff. And down here at the bottom, we have the PID controls. I'm only using one set of uh, coefficients for both the X and the Y. I didn't do separate ones for each one, and uh, it seems to do good enough. I really didn't put a whole lot of time into tuning this. I just uh, got it to the point where it was functioning and uh, called it a day. So all that explained, let me go stick the target on the wall, and we'll try it out. As you can see over here, we now are tracking something for the target. Now I'll just turn on the laser and we'll see how well this thing does. Three, two, one. It did get there. Uh, let's try it again. I'm gonna reset it and let it go again. This is all a little bit different from yesterday. Maybe I'll reduce this one bit.
It appears that if I add very much of the derivative component at all, we start getting some heavy oscillation. If you notice how it's sort of circling the center and never staying totally stationary, I think that's because uh, the servos can only accept increments of uh, integer values. So for instance, you can only go from like 90 degrees to 91 degrees. Uh, you can't go to like 90.5 degrees. And with the distance this thing sits from the wall, I think that one degree makes a pretty big difference on where exactly it's pointing. Uh, so it's never able to get exactly lined up with the center, so it's just constantly trying to correct for that. And every now and then it overcomes the next integer value and you know sends itself a little too far. Not really anything I can do about that right now. So now, of course, we need to take a look at how well this thing can track on a moving target, which is a lot more important for a sentry turret than just a stationary target. So let's see how it goes. This time I won't be getting shot. Sorry to disappoint. So yeah, pretty cool. Like I said, not super well tuned. I did see some oscillation occasionally. And uh, yeah, you know, I was thinking about it and I think that the proportional control in this case sort of represents uh, how many pixels per degree um, when, you're, when the servos are being adjusted. And it's really just sort of an average value because uh, if the laser pointer is further out to the edges of the camera frame, then it's actually going to cover more pixels with each degree that it changes. And you may have noticed that I didn't use Unity this time. I actually planned to, but um, the problem is Imgu is free uh, to use for C Sharp, but they want 400 bucks to use it for a Unity project. And uh, yeah, I'm not really willing to shell that out. Uh, plus, I'd probably just be creating more of a headache for myself because if I use the Unity version, then I would have to be able to convert their video frame uh, format into Unity's texture format to display it. Uh, so that would be just a whole extra headache, I guess. Uh, but I did port over pretty much the exact same serial communication protocol that I was using before. And on the Arduino, uh, I'm literally just running the exact same sketch that I used for the Connect version. Yeah, so that's it. This time around, I didn't do anything to actually handle firing. And I obviously don't have gesture control. So um, it just does the aiming. Uh, maybe that's a little less flashy than last time when I actually got shot by the turret, but you know, I hope it was still cool to see another approach you could take to solving the same problem. Like I mentioned in the beginning, using color tracking for the target is really just sort of a quick fix and it would be a much better solution to implement some sort of real person tracking uh, instead and then maybe you could still include the gestures and all that stuff. And of course there's some downsides to using this approach, the number one being I think that in a bright lighting situation. I don't see how you would be able to track the laser pointer. Uh, maybe if you had a way more powerful laser or something like that. Uh, or if you were just much better at computer vision than I am, maybe there's some way you could figure out how to ensure that you're always tracking it accurately. I mean, I think it's feasible that it could work in a real life situation, but I don't really have the time or the skills to actually make that work. And if you got something out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. The way that I forgot to record the like and subscribe portion, so I'm actually just recycling some old footage and uh, doing a voiceover on that.